In this video, we're going to be solving complete problems that involve static and kinetic friction. So, a student is trying to push a 70 kilogram box across the floor by applying a 322 newton force to the right. The coefficient of static friction between the box and the floor is 0 0.5, and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.4. Neglect drag. Let's start by drawing our forces that are acting on the box. So we have our weight downwards, normal force upwards, the force from the student to the right, which is another normal force, and since the box is either trying to move to the right or may actually be moving to the right, we're going to have a friction to the left. Alright, that gives us a total of four forces acting on the box. Let's go ahead and write down things that we might need later. So net force, mass, and acceleration, and then start filling out our given. So 70 kilograms is our mass. Since weight is mass times gravitational constant, we get 700 newtons for the weight. The student is applying a 322 newton force, and that will be our normal force to the right. Alright, I want to go ahead and write down my coefficients of friction. So up here at the top, I'm going to write down static. We know for static, the coefficient of friction mu is 0 0.5. And for kinetic, the coefficient of friction is 0 0.4. Alright, so we know since this object is on flat ground, the weight and the normal force will balance each other out. That will give me a normal force of 700 newtons. Now using the normal force and the equation that friction equals normal force times mu, I can figure out that my maximum static friction, or Fs max, is 400 times 0.5, which gives me 350 newtons. And my kinetic friction, if I need it, will be 700 times 0.4, which will give me 280 newtons. I think it's a good idea to write down these things up here, even if you don't end up using them in the, both of them in the problem. Alright, so looking at this problem, the student is applying a 322 newton force to the right. And I always ask myself, is that enough force to overcome the maximum static friction? Remember, friction tries to keep the object at rest. Now looking at this, I'm going to compare the force that's applied to the right with the maximum static friction. So this tells me that my maximum static friction is strong enough to keep the object at rest. So I can go ahead and say that the box will not slide. And that was because my maximum static friction was 350 newtons. The box will not slide because the maximum static friction, or Fs max, is greater than the applied force, or the normal force, from the student. Alright, so if I know the box doesn't slide, I know the friction will push back just enough to balance this out. So my friction is going to be 322 newtons, making my net force and my acceleration zero. So let me fill those out on the left side, 322 newtons for the friction, and zero for my net force and acceleration. Before we take a look at the next problem, let's think, how would this problem change if my normal force were instead 400 newtons? If my normal force were instead 400 newtons, then my static friction wouldn't be large enough to prevent this from moving. My force would then become, my, my friction, excuse me, would then become kinetic, so it would be 280 newtons. To get my net force, I do the force in the front minus the force behind, so 400 minus 280, and I'd get 120 newtons. I could do 120 divided by 70 
to get my acceleration of 1.71 meters per second squared. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at another problem. So in this problem, a 5.4 kilogram box is released on an incline as shown. The coefficient of static friction between the box and the surface is 0 0.45 and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.38. Let's again write down net force mass and acceleration because we'll need those later and then draw our forces acting on the box. Alright, so let's draw our weight straight down as always. Our normal force, since the hill is, since we're on an incline, my normal force is going to be diagonally up to the right, perpendicular to the surface. And the box is either sliding down the hill or may slide down the hill, so we'll have a friction up to the left, and that's it for the forces. Since we're on an incline, so the friction and the normal force are tilted, we want to think about our axes like this, and so resolve our weight. I'm going to draw the normal component of the weight and the downhill component of the weight about the right sizes there. I know that these should form a, as you remember, these should form a right angle. Also, the weight should be the largest since it's the hypotenuse. Since this angle is closer to zero than to 90, I know most of the force is going into the hill, so that's why my normal weight component should come out larger. All right, let's go ahead and fill out some given. So 5.4 kilograms is going to be the mass, making my weight 54 newtons. It also says that the coefficients of static and kinetic friction are given to us. So I'm going to go ahead and write those down over here. So for static, mu is 0 0.45. For kinetic, mu is 0 0.38. All right, before I can figure out what my maximum static friction are and my kinetic friction, I need to figure out what my normal force is. All right, so time to do a little bit of trigonometry. First, I know that this 31 degrees right here by some geometry arguments or just by seeing where it looks like it fits it's going to go right there so that's my angle theta which makes W my hypotenuse the normal weight component my adjacent side WD my opposite side I know that sine theta equals O over H so I can rearrange that and get that H sine theta equals O and I'll also use cosine, rearranging to solve for A. All right, so plugging in, let's find O first. So plugging in 54 sine 31, we're going to get that my downhill weight component equals 27.8 newtons. My normal weight component, I'll do 54 cosine 31 and get 46.3. All right, once I've done my trigonometry, I know that my weight was resolved in these two, so I'll pay attention to the two components instead of the hypotenuse. That means that my normal force will be 46.3 newtons. And then I can use my normal force in the equation um, in the equation friction equals mu times normal force to get my maximum static friction and my kinetic friction. So multiplying 0.45 times 46.3, I get 20.8 for my maximum static friction. And for my kinetic friction, 0.38 times 46.3 gives me 17.6 newtons. All right, so now I know that my weight and my normal force have balanced. So let's look at what's left. 
So now to figure out whether this box is going to slide or not, I'm looking at my downhill weight component. So my downhill weight component is 27.8 newtons. I always ask myself, is the static friction strong enough to keep this object at rest? Well, my static friction is 20.8 newtons. My maximum static friction is 28.8 newtons. So I conclude that is not strong enough to keep the object at rest, so the object is going to slide. down to the right. All right. Since the object slides, I immediately know that my friction will be my kinetic friction. So my friction is 17.6 newtons. Now I can find my net force by subtracting my downhill weight component minus my friction. And that should give me 10.2 newtons. And finally, 10.2 newtons divided by my mass of 5.4, or net force divided by mass, will give me an acceleration of 1.89 meters per second squared. All right, filling out my answers on the left, I had three forces acting on the block. Remember, components don't count. The magnitude of my normal force was 46.3 newtons. My maximum static friction was 20.8 newtons. Oh, my bad. It's one step ahead right there. So the magnitude of the downhill weight component was 27.8 newtons. The maximum static friction was 20.8 newtons. As a result, my box slid down to the right. Be careful, yours might not. The strength of the frictional force on the box was 17.6, making the net force 10.2 newtons, and the acceleration 1.89 meters per second squared. Keep in mind that in your problem, if, when you compare the downhill weight component to the static friction. If your maximum static friction was bigger, then your box wouldn't slide. The friction would just equal the downhill weight component, and the net force and acceleration would be zero.